Michael Jordan was pegged for the Chicago White Sox AA club in Nashville, but he refused to challenge the baseball union, and Jordan left camp last week. Then he asked that his equipment be sent up to Chicago today, where Jordan, the former three-time MVP, has been practicing for the last couple of days with his old Bulls club. Jordan has not played an NBA game since 1993 when he led Chicago to their third straight title. Michael wasn't talking, but other Bulls sounded cautiously optimistic today. It's a reality, but it's still not a reality. So we're just not pinning any hopes, so or we're not trying to, you know, throw up a balloon or a kite that's not ready to fly. I wouldn't be surprised anything Michael does. He, he's full of surprises, so I, I really don't know. I don't have a feel, and I won't dare ask him personally. That's, that's none of my business, but if he wants to tell me, uh, he'll tell me, and I don't have to ask, and uh, we'll all know at the same time, I suppose. Specifically, Scottie Pippen and B.J. Armstrong. He doesn't want to see them traded after this season. Was anybody cut to make room for Jordan on the roster? Yeah, I saw Dickie Simpkins uh, limping after last night's game, and uh, he was placed on injured reserve today. <laughs> okay, what number, by the way, is Michael going to wear? Do we know? Well, I, I assume it's 23, but uh, people are speculating he might wear his baseball number 45, but I think it'll be 23. All right, Pete, we look forward to talking to you tomorrow from Indianapolis. Again, Michael Jordan will play against the Pacers in a game that will be shown nationally here on NBC. Jordan returns to the NBA on NBC at noon Eastern. Jordan's first game back will be tomorrow afternoon, a nationally televised contest at Indiana against the Pacers at noon Eastern time. The Bulls left for Indianapolis tonight without his airness. Jordan takes a chartered flight tomorrow morning as the basketball world waits with bated breath. He walked in this morning and uh, shook my hand, said, uh, you know, it's a done deal. We're all very happy about this. Uh, we think it's going to be great for our basketball club. We hope expectations, which are going to be high, aren't overreaching for what we have as a basketball club. We're just glad he's getting back on the court and going to play. Yeah, he's in an upbeat mood, and I think, you know, that um, he wanted a tape of Indiana so that he could watch them play. He wanted to know how they played. He wanted to know what we did against them defensively and offensively. He was right into the game strategy right away. Well, I think after having him on the floor tomorrow, I'll, I'll be able to describe it. Maybe won't be able to describe it, but once we see him out there in that red uniform playing for the Chicago Bulls, that'll be the emotional moment we're, we've looked for and we've all waited for. So what do Michael's peers think of his return? They couldn't stop him before, but now after 17 months, it sounds like they want to give basketball's prodigal son a big hug and a kiss. We start with his old buddy Chuck. Hey, welcome back and good luck. We're going to hold up, try to hold up our end of the bargain. We won't play them again unless they get to the finals. And like I said, good luck. I think it, it's great for the game, and it's great for the NBA. And uh, I think everybody will be tuned in tomorrow to watch Michael play. Now, to see him come back, it's just going to make a huge impact on, on basketball and sports throughout the world. He looked pretty good playing against us in the day he practiced. In fact, I didn't see any uh, loss of skill. He choreographed all this. He scripted this whole situation. So he's not going to come back unless he's going to come back with a bang and he's looking good. You can believe that. Well, it's been quite a 17-month journey for Air Jordan. Our Tom Kirkland looks into what brought the most dominant player in the game back to the NBA. Once again, Michael Jordan's driving hard down the lane. It was just 17 months ago that Michael shocked the round ball realm by announcing his retirement. I just feel that I don't have anything else for myself to prove. But he did leave the locker room door open for a possible comeback. I think the, 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 the word retire means uh, you can do anything you want from this day on. So if I desire to come back and play again, maybe that's what I want to do. Maybe that's the challenge that I may need someday down the road. Challenge? There was none left for him to meet. Jordan played in rarefied air indeed, arguably the greatest basketball player to ever grace the court. Three-time NBA MVP, he won seven consecutive scoring titles, three straight championship MVP awards while leading his Bulls to the mind-boggling three-peat. And oh yeah, Jordan once scored 23 straight points in a game. That's an NBA record. But all the awards and attention only magnified Michael's every move and cut down his ring of privacy. And then his father's tragic murder in the summer of 1993 dealt him a blow most unkind. Michael called time out and quit basketball, only to begin a passionate pursuit of a career in baseball. But even in double A ball, Jordan was hardly an impact player, except in the stands. People came to see him by the thousands. He briefly stepped back into the hoop spotlight at Scottie Pippen's charity game, 
The last game at the Chicago Stadium. Rusty? Not at all. Then it was back to baseball, but hitting 200 wouldn't get him to the majors. And then when the baseball strike carried over to spring training, no replacement was he. Frustrated by the labor dispute, Jordan quit his baseball career two weeks ago and then began secret workouts with the Bulls. Well, make that not so secret. Would you like, would you like to see him come back? Yes, I would. I, I think that he would be a good addition to this. <laughs> Perhaps Michael's magic could conjure up another title run. It's an idea that's gaining steam in the Windy City. See in the championship! The Bulls will first set their sights on Cleveland. The Cavaliers are three games ahead, and with 17 games left in the regular season, that is ground the Bulls could conceivably make up. With Sunday's game at Indiana, the Bulls could make up a full game on the Central Division leaders. But if the playoffs were to begin now, the Bulls would face the Knicks in the first round, bringing back to life one of the great playoff rivalries in the NBA. Three straight years, 91 through 93, the Bulls knocked the Knicks out of the playoffs. In 94, Chicago's first year without Jordan, New York managed to return the favor. But that doesn't mean the Knicks won't welcome Jordan's comeback. Well, I think definitely it gives Chicago a better better opportunity right now. They're a 500 team right now, and I think uh, you know, depending on where Michael is physically and mentally, is going to have a have a say on on how far Chicago is able to go and where they're able to end the season up. And Harper can read a lineup. Jordan might be back in uniform, but these aren't his same surrounding bulls that helped him win those three championship rings. Gone, Horace Grant to Orlando, and Bill Cartwright to Seattle. And in their place, Tony Kukoc and Will Perdue. I can only imagine what it was like seeing Babe Ruth, because I think this man, I used to say, was the Babe Ruth of basketball. I've now come to believe that Babe Ruth was the Michael Jordan of baseball. No one then, with the exception of Michael himself, could have known that two months later, he would be attempting to compete on the same field of battle which made the Babe famous. In December of 94, Jordan began working out for baseball. Nearly everyone thought it was a joke. Everyone except Michael. I do have you know, skills and, and capabilities of possibly playing this game as long as I want to stay with it and uh, you know, I plan on trying to keep improving on that so that I don't make a fool of myself. Impressed enough with the improvement Jordan had shown or convinced that he would be the greatest gate attraction since dare we say Ruth, the White Sox signed Jordan to a free agent contract and invited him to spring training. The circus-like atmosphere put pressure on the other players in camp but the focus was clearly on Michael. On March 31st, MJ was assigned to the AA Birmingham Barons. Before playing his first game, he spent $350,000 on a new team bus. The date, April 8th, is significant in Jordan's life for two reasons. It was on that day during the 85-86 basketball season, he scored 63 points against the Celtics. It was on that day in 1994 that Jordan began his professional baseball career, playing right field for the Barons. The numbers he created off the field were more impressive than the ones he produced on it. Wherever he went, fans flocked to see him play. Jordan ended up hitting 202 with 51 RBIs. He stole 30 bases, struck out 114 times, but over the last three weeks of the season, Jordan went 12 for 40, hitting 300. That's a good start. I don't think I'm finished. I think my, my dream is still continuing. I'm still trying to get to the major league if possible. I mean, that's the ultimate dream. Five days after he put the glove down, he put his sneakers back on, playing in a charity game hosted by Scottie Pippen. Jordan displayed the moves and pizzazz, which earned him three regular season and three postseason MVP awards. He scored 52 points, then kissed the Chicago Stadium floor and seemingly his basketball life goodbye. Like Birmingham, Scottsdale, Arizona was the next to benefit from MJ's presence. His play in the Fall League continued to lend credence to the notion that he may someday play in the bigs. Jordan batted 252 in 35 games. But in November, basketball called again. In a made-for-TV event, Jordan's number was retired, and a statue of the living legend was unveiled in front of the new United Center, affectionately known as the house that Jordan built. February 17, 1995, Michael turns 32 in Sarasota, Florida. But on March 2nd, he walked out of the White Sox training camp, having earlier vowed not to get in the middle of the strike. Now, he's back in the middle of basketball.